Hey everyone, in this how-to video, I will be showing you how to design and spatially control lattice structures and gyroids within the MTOP platform. My name is Gabrielle Thalen and I am on the application engineering team. And in this video, I will first show you a real world application of this concept. And then I will move into a step-by-step -step instruction and in how you can do this yourself. Finally, I will start to introduce the concept of field-driven design and show you how you can take your design even further by varying parameters such as the wall thickness of your part. This is a two-part series, so I'll be giving a preview of this field-driven design concept and then dive into it further in part two. All right, so let's jump into the software. Before I get into the how-to portion of this video, I just wanted to provide a visual and real-world application of what we'll be covering. Here we have a pressure vessel in which we have structural ribbing applied to the outside of this part, which blends at the boundaries. But the aspect that we are going to focus on is actually what's happening on the inside of this vessel. So I'm actually going to open up my section cut tool. And um, now you'll see that we have a gyroid infill that is applied to this part and it's being varied in a couple of ways. First, we're able to alter the wall thickness of this part by applying this concept of field-driven design to vary the wall thickness based on pressure values. Second, I'm able to vary the periodicity of this gyroid structure based on the desired flow behavior at the inlet and outlet of this vessel. The varying of this periodicity or cell size is the aspect that we will focus on in this video. So performance requirements are often not uniform throughout the entire part geometry as seen in the pressure vessel example. One solution that NTOP platform offers is the remap block, which lets you alter how the structure performs in these different areas. So before we get to the remap block, let's first create a structure that we will eventually apply this remap block to. So I'm just going to create a box here, bump up the length, width, and height to um, 50 millimeters. Next, I'm going to apply a wall TPMS structure to this. If I go to lattices, we have a block called wall TPMS. Going to apply this wall TPMS to my box. Also going to bump up the cell size to 10 millimeters in the XYZ. Increase the approximate thickness to one millimeter just to get a better visual and then going to select gyroid. And now you can see we have um, a nice uniform gyroid structure and we can move on to the fun stuff of um, varying the periodicity or the cell size of this structure. So if I go into the fields tab and select remap field within the remap section, we'll get this remap block. And I'm actually gonna open up the information panel which will show you um, information on the block and also the inputs. But essentially the remap field block will take the X, Y, and Z scalar field values of a designated scalar field. In this case, it will be our um, simple gyroid structure and then map them to a new evaluation location. So we're going to essentially warp or manipulate the X, Y, Z coordinates of this structure to vary how this structure responds over space or a distance. So to do so, let's designate the scalar field that we want to remap. Again, it's just going to be um, the simple structure we created earlier. And before I do that, I'm just going to make my gyroid box here a variable just to keep our um, notebook nice and organized. And now I'm going to drag this gyroid box into my scalar field input. Now we have the X, Y, and Z inputs to our remap field block. Here's where we will start designating a field to be used to evaluate a new location for each of these components. This is also where we can start incorporating blocks from our math tab, which is what we will be doing in this example. So let's begin with just altering how our structure behaves along the X axes of our structure. So for this example, I'm going to use the multiply block. So if I just go in this input and start typing in multiply, we can propagate that input. 
And within the operand A input, I'm just going to input X uh, because I will be altering the X values of my structure. And within the operand B input, I'm going to search for my ramp block, which essentially allows me to vary my structure based on designated inputs and outputs. So now I am in my ramp block, and within the scalar field input, I'm going to enter an X. And in doing so, I will be altering how my structure responds as I move along its X axes. For my in min, I will enter in a value of zero. And for my in max, I'll put the length of this box, so 50 millimeters. Now I will need to designate an out min and an out max. Basically, I'll designate how I want to vary my structure as I transition from a value of zero millimeters up to a value of 50 millimeters on the X axis of my structure. And in this case, I'll be designating the values that I will be multiplying the X coordinates of my structure by. Let's start off by entering 0.15 in both inputs. going to select a geometric continuity and then I'm going to leave my Y and Z coordinates untouched here. So if I move over to the X, yeah, let's isolate our view here. If I move over to where we move along the X axis here, you can see my gyroid structure looks quite a bit different here. And I can start playing with these values. Let's maybe try entering new values here. And you can see how I'm starting to vary the periodicity of the structure. And I can apply the same concept in these Y and Z inputs as well. Okay, so I showed this remap block on the simple box, but now you may be asking, how do I apply this to a real part? It's actually pretty simple, and for this pressure vessel example here, all I did was use the same process that we just went through step by step, but then I did, if you look at, um, I have a block here called trim TPMS, all I did was a final Boolean intersect between um, this translated, so my warped gyroid box here, so actually you can see I have this warped gyroid block, box, and a Boolean intersect with my internal volume, so my, kind of my initial piece here. And then I got that trim TPMS that I was able to um, then union back with my shell and my outer part here. So this remap block is really powerful, and due to the mathematical nature of the implicit geometry within Untop Platform, I can apply this concept to structures like um, this beam base lattice here. So I just have a volume lattice on the simple block, turn on my remap, you can see I'm able to kind of do some cool lattice tricks here. Again, like just using this remap field, in this case, manipulating how this structure um, performs in the Z axis. And then also apply the same concept to maybe a simple plate here. So a simple plate, but let's add um, a sine wave behavior to it. Again, we have a sine wave equation um, manipulating it in the z direction. So that was the application of the remap block and I already gave you a preview of the ramp block which is kind of the key to this whole field driven design concept that we talk a lot about here at NTOP. I will delve into this concept further in part two of this series but to give you another sneak peek of this, I'm going to actually jump back to our pressure vessel here. So I mentioned I was able to vary the wall thickness based on pressure values. I was actually able to do so using the ramp block that I named here. Um, if I go up, I have this ramp block here in which I named wall thickness ramp. And um, how I'm able to vary the wall thickness of these walls was actually based on an imported pressure map here. 
which can be visualized. So let's actually turn this view on, let's get rid of this, change the color map here. And you can see this pressure map here and those high pressure values seen in red. So in this case, high pressure corresponded to thicker walls. So stay tuned for part two for a how-to on the ramp block in field-driven design. All right, so by being able to apply this concept of remap to these structures, you will be able to have complete control of your geometry, furthermore delivering products which meet performance requirements. I hope you enjoyed this how-to video. If you're interested in a demo, please visit entopology.com to request a demo. For more content, please sign up for our newsletter and check out our LinkedIn on a regular basis. Thank you for watching.